Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about putting other desktop environments on Linux Mint, specifically Budgie. Budgie is one of my favorite desktop environments. It has a degree of modernity to it, same thing that Cinnamon has. Uh, I do like Cinnamon better, to be fair, but at the same time, Budgie is an excellent alternative option. Let's talk first about the things I don't like about Budgie. First, it uses the Nautilus file manager, which I think is crap. It's one of my least favorite file managers. Nemo is way better. Uh, additionally, it does not have the ability to run launchers on the taskbar. It just has the ability to pin, which gets in the way of my basic workflow. Other than that, Budgie itself is modern, sleek, has a very nice style design, good user interface, and easy management across the board, making it an excellent desktop environment, some that many people have said GNOME done right. And I would agree with that general premise. So today what we're going to do is we're going to install Budgie on Linux Mint. Now you can install pretty much any desktop environment you can install on a Debian slash Ubuntu base. You can also install on Linux Mint. You might have a little bit of conflict here and there, um, especially if you're swapping between the different desktop environments. Of course, Linux Mint used to have a Plasma option as well. The reason they dropped that is because Linux Mint is, it relied so heavily on GNOME that there were a lot of package conflicts with it, and it was just too much up for their team to manage. Now, that being said, after they dropped it, I did have a video years ago about putting Plasma on Linux Mint. If you guys want to see me attempt that again, I would be glad to do that. Uh, we can do that in a future video. But today we're just going to be looking at installing Budgie. So what we're going to do is first we have to start by looking at uh, the installation process. So I did a video about getting started with Linux Mint and we'll walk through the first steps of that video again because it's important. So you want to start in with Linux Mint. Now if you do have NVIDIA cards it is possible to install it with uh, NVIDIA. Uh, you can do that by going into the extra options in the grub menu. But here we're on the Linux Mint desktop. Just go ahead and click the installer and then we're just going to use the basic default installation. So very easy. Linux Mint does have a very simple installer and uh, we're just going to you know, just pick your time zones and pick your media codecs and then it's going to ask, ask just a few more questions here. And then overall, it's going to take, I don't know, anywhere from five minutes to, you know, 30 minutes to install, depending on your system. So you can see in the um, uh, formatting section of the drive, you can do something else, which is manually gparting your drive. You can reinstall alongside an existing operating system, which is good if you're not trying to uh, destroy your current operating system, or in my case, I'm just going to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. Now, of course, you can run through and install Budgie if you already have Linux Mint running, but uh, we're just starting fresh today. So go ahead and pick your time zone, whatever you want it to be, and then you need to pick your username, computer name, all these types of uh, fun things, and then choose if you want to automatically log in or require the password. So once we get this part, uh, it's going to take some time, depending on the speed of your computer. It could take, you know, five minutes up to 30 minutes. Once it's done, then it's going to prompt you to either uh, continue using it or restart. Uh, whichever one here, you just need to reboot the system in order to boot off of the new installation that you have inserted in. Once we get booted into the system, go ahead and log in. We will get our welcome screen. Now, I'm not going to run through the first steps of the welcome screen because those are related to Cinnamon. But the things that you might want to think about doing is setting up your system snapshots. And you certainly would like to upgrade your system before you, um, uh, before you make any of these changes. Also, I'm going to have a brief look at the driver manager as well. It turns out I don't need to install anything else everything on my drivers is all set up so from here I will go ahead and um, push the system updates I did show on my um, getting started with Linux Mint video how to update your package mirrors and things we're not going to do that here we're just going to go straight into the update and uh, here we're just going to have a look at the update preferences push OK and then 
we're going to go ahead and push our updates. Now, your updates, depending on uh, when the latest release of Linux Mint was, uh, it could take you a little bit of time. In fact, it's not too uncommon for the updates to take longer than installation itself. So go ahead, set that up, and then wait patiently for the uh, for the uh, the updates to finish, and then once those are done, we are going to reboot the system in case there's anything there that uh, we would like the latest versions, and then we'll go ahead and go on to our next step. So once the updates are done, we reboot the system, and we're going to go right on into here, and we're going to do sudo apt install ubuntu budgie desktop. Once we do this, this is also going to take a little bit of time. It took me maybe about 30 minutes or so. Now, the downside of doing this is it's going to install a bunch of bloatware. Uh, basically, it installs almost everything that comes with stock GNOME, although Budgie itself does not come with stock GNOME any longer. But it installed a boatload of games, which I find are worthless. It installs Presario, which is awesome if you plan on using it, but it's useless for uh, the modern computers that don't usually come with a CD drive, since that's a uh, open source CD burning application. I love it. I use it. It's just not going to be applicable to most of your systems these days. It also has a lot of other uh, tools that come with it that I find fairly useless. I wish there was a more streamlined system, a streamlined way to do this, but um, regardless, this is what we are doing. So once we get through our uh, upgrade process here, it's, it's going to take, like I said, about 30 minutes. And then once we get into that part, then we're just going to reboot our system again. So we're going to go ahead and shut down the terminal, reboot the whole system. And um, once we reboot the system, then you will have the option now to choose between running Cinnamon or running Budgie. So with Linux Mint using LightDM as the login manager, what we're going to see here is when you go over there to type in the password for your username, you will see up there the little icon next to your username up there. So you can pull this guy down and then you can see we have Budgie as an option and then there's Cinnamon and then there's Cinnamon with software rendering mode. Go ahead and select the Budgie, which is your uh, your icon there, your circle with your little, I don't know, whatever that little teardrop looking thing is in it. And once we go ahead and get logged in, it's going to load you Budgie. Now, since this is the Linux Mint that is based on Ubuntu, it's going to give you basically the full layout for the Ubuntu Budgie, which is going to give us a plank at the bottom. It's going to give us the wallpapers, the theming, and the styles that we have inside of Ubuntu. So we might want to change some of these things around. So I like changing the menu over into the other platform. I might even move the panel to the bottom bottom, which is easy to do, uh, although I didn't do it in this particular video here. Uh, but I think maybe I might do a video on getting started with the Budgie desktop to show you all those options. I think I might actually already have one. Um, but you can see that uh, the Budgie uh, desktop here, it's nice. It has this Raven menu over there, which has system settings, calendars, plugins. Also has the audio controls there very nicely. Now, there's a couple different settings. This is one of the downsides of Budgie is there's two settings panels. One is the GNOME settings panel, and the other one is the Budgie settings panel. The GNOME will manage everything about the general system. The Budgie system uh, settings will manage all of the things regarding the desktop environment. So your themes, your layouts, your Raven configuration, and anything that is in your, your panels and such like that. So you can see we can change... The themes around if you don't want to use the the default Ubuntu looking themes. Of course, we can change the the desktop um, from the settings panel, not from the Budgie settings. Or I believe you can still right click the desktop. Now, Budgie itself, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think Budgie has done away with the desktop icons. So Ubuntu has modified it to include the desktop icons. Don't take me at exact word for that. I can't remember for sure. Um, but uh, there was actually an issue where they didn't necessarily want to, but they were so closely tied to GNOME when GNOME pulled them out. It was a problem, uh, at least at one point in time. You can see here that uh, Ubuntu does a good job of bringing the desktop icons back. So that is an advantage of doing the uh, an Ubuntu build and the Ubuntu repository budgie, even though it is all fully themed with Ubuntu, which you may not like, um, or you might find it fine, it, you know, either way. 
Um, but it is a good way to get budgy with your desktop uh, icons, which for me is something that I like. Now here we can just configure your Raven menu. You can see your uh, desktop settings down there at the bottom. And then, of course, the one thing that I pointed out is that there are a lot of software packages that are uh, installed that I really wish it didn't. So we'll go ahead and boot up the software store. It does install the GNOME software store. You should still be able to get to the Linux Mint one as well, but this is the default. So here it installed Geary. I think it's the world's most useless uh, email client. Uh, so just go ahead and uninstall it from there. Now, Budgie does not have the option that Cinnamon does where you can right-click and install from the menu. That might be what you do is get this installed, log into Cinnamon, go into the menu, and just uninstall everything from the menu there that you don't want. Uh, but installed that, installed several games, uh, a few other system tools that I don't find particularly useful. So it does come with a little bit of bloat. But um, that being said, um, it certainly is a... Um, it certainly is a good option. So once we get this installed, now you have a full-fledged running Linux Mint system with the Budgie desktop instead of your Cinnamon, XFC, or Mate. So with that, we'll go ahead and uh, shut down our system here. And uh, with the system shut down, just the, the final remarks, literally any desktop environment that you can install with Ubuntu, which I realize isn't every one of them, but is most of them, you can install on top of Linux Mint, provided, of course, you are using the Linux Mint um, based on Ubuntu. Of course, anything you can install on Debian, you can install on the Linux Mint Debian Edition. So yes, you can install GNOME, you can install Plasma. Some things might conflict with some files. I did notice at one point in time, uh, I think it was Endeavor OS, where if I had Plasma and Cinnamon on it, some of the configuration files would fight with each other. And so that is certainly a consideration. So be warned, if you do put an extra desktop environment on, swapping between the desktop environments on a regular basis might show a few errors here and there. Now, Budgie and Cinnamon both being based on GNOME, we're probably not going to have a lot of uh, conflict unless it's something dealing with themes or stuff like that. But Cinnamon, I think, manages themes in a different way. So uh, that should be fine as well. So it should be uh, fairly easy for any other desktop environment you would like. In this case, we did Budgie. So you can go between Cinnamon, Budgie, and whatever else. So that, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Switch to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.